I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jason D'Souza, Head of Investor Relations at JB Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Lizanne. Welcome to the earnings call of JB Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals Limited. We have with us today Mr. Nikhil Chopra, CEO and Whole Time Director, Mr. Kunal Khanna, President Transformation, and Mr. Vijay Bhatt, Chief Financial Officer at JB Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals Limited. Before we begin, I would like to state that some of the statements in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve certain risks and uncertainties. A detailed statement in this regard is available on the Q1 FY22 results presentation that has been sent to you earlier. I would like to now hand it over to Mr. Nikhil Chopra, CEO, to begin the proceedings of the call and give his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. A warm welcome and thank you for taking time to join us for this discussion on the operating and financial performance for JB Chemical Pharmaceutical in this first quarter of FI22. Before we begin, I hope all of you along with your families are keeping safe and healthy and we hope that the worldwide vaccine drive will enable humanity to conquer COVID and we all will come out stronger from this whole experience. We look forward to a better times in the future. I will start with an overview of our performance and share some of our perspective on the businesses following which our CFO, Mr. Vijay Bhatt, will take you through the key financial highlights. After that, we'll be more than happy to take your questions. Friends, we have begun the new financial year on a strong note, taking forward the momentum from the previous year. Revenue has grown by 16%, to rupees 606 crore during the first quarter, which is the highest ever top line recorded in any one quarter in the history of the company. While the operating environment remained challenging during the course of the quarter with lockdowns and supply chain related limitations, both in India and some key international markets, the strategic initiatives undertaken over the last few months are starting to pay out, play out to create a long runway for the growth in the businesses. We reported EBITDA margin 27% for the quarter one and the margin performance takes into account normalized cost structure and higher logistic related expense in the quarter under review. We continue our efforts to institute the building blocks for sustainable growth of our organization. You would have noticed a significant number of new product launches, new divisions being introduced cost efficiency initiatives implemented across the organization, various people-centric initiatives launched and focus on building the robust R&D team. Friends, while we continue to deliver in the short term, it's imperative for us to put in place a sustainable long-term growth strategy, thereby creating value for our shareholders continuously. Coming to our domestic business, which recorded another sterling performance during quarter one, growing by 39%. All our big brands continue to record high growth rates, which have significantly benefited the businesses. Further, due to limited sales of our COVID portfolio, we feel confident about sustaining our market bidding performance. This also is indicative of sustainability and resilience of our revenue streams in the medium to long term. Once this heightened pandemic phase is behind us and life returns to normal, as per IQVA MET data June 2021, our growth is 24% versus market growth of 19% for the Indian pharma market. And this growth of our, what we have, what we have demonstrated, is, has very limited contribution from the COVID portfolio. Majorly, our growth is supported by therapy diversification and other transitions that, that derive leverage from the established organization strengths. During the quarter, we announced our foray in the world of nephrology segment with the launch of new division Renova, covering chronic kidney disease to end state renal ailments. Also, we have launched our NOVA division, which will focus on pediatrics and respiratory segments in India with a 350-member team focus on antivirals, corticosteroids, anti-allergics, and nicotine replacement therapies. Both of these are the expansions aligned with our core strengths. Having implemented our new go-to-market model, we also continue to evaluate several new growth opportunities that will further drive productivity on a relatively stable cost base. 
we have implemented our new go to market model without any increase in manpower the transformation story is supported by the continuous efficiency driving initiatives like salesforce automation salesforce excellence incremental digital adoption which is a combination of digital and physical consolidation of resources not only across therapy areas but also in terms of geographical coverage and control coming to our international business the situation remains challenging because of the uncertainty surrounding the second wave of covid-19 and shipment challenges that we face which impacted revenue growth for selected pockets in the international business and the cmo business however the silver lining is the us and the south africa business continue to show so a strong momentum each of them delivering a growth in excess of 20% during the first quarter overall the international business delivered flattish top line we expect these factors to be transient in nature with the underlying demand drivers and our market position remaining remaining intact we are also strengthening our r&d capabilities and that should support medium to long term growth opportunities in the international market where we stand today the outlook for the rest of the year remains highly positive we see continuing growth momentum along while continuing our best cost efficiency initiatives we are also strengthening our r&d capabilities that should support the medium to long term growth opportunities in the international market consequently we expect stable margins even as cost structures revert back to normalized level this will enable continuing cash generation and high return ratios overall we remain well positioned to drive long term value for our stakeholders based on sustain sustainable gains and some key strategic initiatives with with this with this commentary i would like to conclude my opening remarks remarks and i would like to now hand over to mr vijay to share with you brief perspective on our financial performance thank you over to you vijay thank you thank you nikhil good afternoon everyone and welcome to jb chemicals Q1's earning call. I will now take you through some of the key highlights of our financial performance for the quarter ended June 30, 2021. During quarter one, we have recorded revenue growth of 16% year on year to cross the threshold of 600 crore for the first time in the quarter, as indicated by Nikhil earlier. Domestic revenue growth was 39%. led by large brands and market beating performance in non covid therapies however uncertainty surrounding the covid second wave of covid impacted the growth in some of our international markets most importantly the gross margin profile remained healthy during the quarter which was aided by a positive shift in product mix despite our cost base returning to normalized level ebitda margin continues to remain strong compared to the preceding quarter ebitda margin during q1 significantly improved to 26.9% against 23.4% in q4 of fy21 it also measures up well against full year of fy21 fy21 margin level of 27.4% however the decline in ebitda margin on a year on year basis is primarily on account of suboptimal cost base in q1 of fy21 due to the covid-19 lockdown Going forward, we expect that the margin to remain healthy and in the range of last year's margin level, despite cost structures reverting to the steady and normal levels. I would also like to highlight that the lower other income in Q1 FY22 is reflection of normalized bond yields in the fixed income funds compared to the volatile yields during the same quarter last year. We expect this trend to continue. Of the, we expect that this normalized bond yields level to continue throughout the. current financial year based on the higher revenue and higher cost base profit before tax of q1 fy22 came in line with corresponding quarter last year effective tax rate remained unchanged at 25% therefore profit after tax is also at the same level of rupees 119 crore on a year on year basis going forward we will continue to pursue our strategic business objective that is of delivering profitable growth on the back of multiple business initiatives and maintaining strong cash accretion we expect that the business to expand by leveraging the existing base of manufacturing distribution and relationships within our ecosystem further we expect this initiative of continuously driving strong returns and create outstanding stakeholder value over the next few years 
With that, I conclude my opening remarks. We would now like to open this forum for an interactive session with all of you and we'll be happy to respond to the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Participants on the webcast, if you wish to ask a question, you may type the question on the box appearing at the bottom of the screen. Participants on audio, to ask a question, you may please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, two questions. Uh, so one is uh, in terms of your uh, international markets, uh, while you said US and uh, South Africa has grown, uh, we see the uh, it's uh, still flattish. So what are the moving parts here and what is the outlook in terms of, you know, uh, a little qualitative and if possible quantitative in terms of your export strategy and uh, growth numbers? So, Prakash, if you, if you look at the entire mix of business in our international market, uh, major uh, major issues that we face because what we what we shared because of the issues of COVID being hit in some of the geographies and because of the logistic issues in in the in the BGX market, they are they are they are things were things were down. But if you look at US US and South Africa, there our growth growth was access to 20%. That is what I gave the commentary. But from a perspective of perspective of uh, future looking guidance, we are looking forward that things will stabilize and we will return back to low double digit growth in our branded generic market as, as, as we stand today because our order book order book for coming quarters looks very healthy. This is for the business which has declined, you are saying? It, it will return from negative yeah, yes, or yes, decline yes, yes. to double digit growth? Yes, yes, yes. So this is largely the lozenges business or there is something more to this? As a sad uh, Prakash here, uh, when we look at our international business, uh, apart from our key geographies, uh, which is US, South Africa and Russia, we have two main legs, uh, CMO and other branded generics markets such as Asia Pac, Central America and LATAM. Uh, the business which has been impacted is uh, largely centered around our Asia Pac, uh, LATAM and Central America offtake in these BGX markets and also our CMO business uh, because of the muted trends in the cough and cold segment. As we look ahead uh, and, uh, you know, based on the recent order flow, we are uh, quite positive that, you know, we will see a uh, revival uh, of uh, these uh, specific pockets in the coming four to five months as well. Yeah, that is helpful. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, in the past, we have commented that, you know, we have a vision or, uh, you know, strategy to take this logistics business to other geographies, a higher value uh, geographies since our plant is, uh, you know, uh, quite qualified. So where are we in that journey? In fact, uh, over the last four months, we have already tapped into one customer in one of our regulated markets. We are working on concepts which go beyond the conventional cough and cold, extending ourselves into segments such as immunity as well. Now, these things take time because we are talking about established CMO customers, you know, where there is a, uh, you know, right from the development to the approval uh, at the customers and it's a 12 to 14 month cycle. But we have seen good traction with uh, with two customers being tapped to new customers in red market being tapped into and we are very confident about our plan. So, 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 so that is underway. Okay. And lastly, on the India business, so you know, uh, we have a mega brand in uh, hypertension, then in gastro. Uh, so, I mean, what we have done here is now entering some leads into other therapies. Uh, I mean, uh, what is our strategy in terms of making another uh, mega brand and which segment would that be? So, 
we are trying to consolidate our position in the world of hypertension. If you look at Prakash, we have a big brand that is Silakar, and the line extension in terms of Silakar T, which is which which conceptually is a is a is a life cycle management that we have done in the world of hypertension. Equally, we have got and we have we have we have got into the world of metabolics. That is with the launch of Vildagliptin and Dapagliflozin. Dapagliflozin as a as a as a as our brand is is has taken off well and we are getting good prescriptions from the medical fraternity. Outside this world, we have entered into into couple of new therapies which I which I spoke in my commentary that is in the world of pediatrics and respiratory where uh, we are we are we are glad to share that we are seeing a good traction in first quarter of launch of these two initiatives but building mega brands in India as you know it takes time it is it, it, it is not easy but you do you to influence the ecosystem so we are on that journey but we are confident enough in terms of in terms of what we are what we are projecting as a guidance in the coming time, uh, we will continue to deliver market beating performance, and also we will get some help in delivering this market beating performance with, with some of the newer initiatives that we have put in place. No, no, I totally appreciate that, and I do understand that mega brands uh, take time. I was just trying to understand uh, with the various initiatives uh, and the great initiatives you have taken over the last two, uh, you know six months. Yes. So in which category do you think the next uh, mega brand coming is what I was trying to understand. So within, that is what I told you, within within the world of hypertension, the life cycle management that we have done with Silaka T, that you will see that brand already is uh, gaining market share, gaining ranks. So that is that is the next big thing that we are looking forward to. And equally, equally we, you will see some, some, not that mega brand, but you will see some brands picking up in the field of pediatrics and respiratory in the coming time. Perfect, great. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Prakash. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Rashmi Sancheti from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, so just to follow up on international markets, uh, when you said that, you know, there are logistic and the uh, shipment uh, issues, uh, is it something that the revenues have been deferred and they're going to get recovered in the subsequent quarters, like for the CMO segment and the geographies which you mentioned? See, it's a combination of international demand trends and partly because of logistics issues, uh, you know, some of the customers, given the freight cost is extremely, extremely high, some of the customers have kind of pushed their open orders you know, because if you really look at the freight container cost, it's gone up from $2,500 per container to almost 10000 Having said that, one cannot run away from the fact that, you know, the end demand trends in specific pockets like Asia Pack, Central America, LATAM have also been slightly muted, uh, but we hope to think, uh, hope that things are going to normalize, uh, you know, as the world uh, kind of sees through this uh, this wave of COVID. Okay, and uh, what about uh, Russia market? Uh, like uh, we mentioned that you know there was a growth revival. Yes. So are we doing growth better than the uh, Russian pharma industry growth, or how is it? Yes, uh, our growth is definitely better than the overall Russian pharma industry, especially in our covered market. We are much uh, better than our counterparts. We are seeing, uh, you know, revival trends, but the next three months are very critical for Russia market because, you know, these are the seasonal uh, months for our product portfolio. And, uh, you know, some of the signs which we see have been positive. So, so we are hopeful that, you know, Russia will recover from an extremely low base, uh, which we witnessed last year. Okay. And so on uh, domestic business, uh, you know, have you taken uh, price hikes uh, during the quarter across the portfolio and specifically for the rent tax franchise? See, as far as price hike uh, is concerned across products, you know, the, there is a cycle for each product and, uh, you know, the, the hikes are taken accordingly. With respect to rent tax franchise, we see the benefits accruing to us uh, at the end of Q3 and Q4. 
we are still sitting with inventory of close to three to four months. Uh, actually, what had happened was uh, during the second wave of COVID to ensure supply security, uh, we had kind of ensured that we are sitting with good uh, material and finished goods uh, stock, and we will see through it. So may, the, the actual uh, uh, benefit uh, accrual will be somewhere around end of Q3 and Q4. Whatever price hike you had taken on uh, the franchise, that will come from Q2 to Q4, and it will reflect on that quarter. That's what you mean. That's yeah, it. thanks. Thanks, Ashwin. Okay, thank you. That's it for me. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is on the line of Sayan Mukherjee from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so uh, one industry, you know, what we are hearing is many of the companies are talking about trade generic as an important growth driver. And in some of the large ones are focusing, it seems the market has grown at, you know, uh, higher than the prescription market growth. And some of the companies are venturing into it. So what is your thought process and how, how do you see this market evolving and does that create some sort of an headwind for the prescription business? So we have ventured into the into the world of generic generics and that happened in, in quarter one. See, what we believe in is capitalizing on the opportunity which is lying in tier two and beyond towns. And through this entire the distribution channel and the and fundamentally what we believe in, that philosophy of driving affordable access of medicines to the Indian population. So this will not only help in improving accessibility of our medicines, but also at the same time, we are looking at how do we how do we maintain the right balance in terms of contribution which is coming from the generic business to sustain our margin profile going ahead. But overall, this this overall helps this entire entire move and many companies have taken this initiative. This this overall helps that of 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 entire concept of accessible affordable medicine to to the Indian population in the look and corner of the country, and and that is that is how we have also got into this business, and 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 this is overall helping the Indian population from 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 the from the reach out perspective. Yeah. But this will have an impact on your overall growth, right? Because a part of the population will be uh, supported through uh, this channel. So the overall opportunity to that extent gets impacted, isn't it? I mean, the prescription growth business to that extent would be lower than what we had anticipated earlier. See, uh, there are two parts to this business. As far as we are concerned, we are being very cautious that uh, the products which we launch through Generic's uh, channel do not cannibalize the prescription products. So two different channels, two very different set of products to capitalize on the opportunity and provide affordable, accessible medicine as, uh, as uh, Nikhil mentioned. And uh, we don't see any real threat of cannibalization. Our strategy is very uh, different and we want to stay away from any cannibalization impact. Okay. Uh, so how large is this business? I mean, is it like very small at this point? Can you quantify? It's too early to comment for us. Uh, like what Nikhil mentioned, what we are going to be cognizant of is the fact that we maintain the balance effectively for us to uh, sustain a healthy uh, margin profile for our overall domestic business. Okay. And so my one more question, if I can ask, uh, you know, you mentioned about uh, mega brands which will be created. Uh, and, you know, how how does that work out? I mean, uh, in the sense that today, you know, we are seeing most of the pharma companies uh, are actually focusing on India a lot more. Uh, so how do you see, is it going to be dependent on m and happening or organically you think it can happen? And what would allow uh, JP to kind of, you know, uh, differentiate itself and you know, create those mega brands? See, first of all, first of all, I would like to at least talk to you that we have enough, enough huge opportunity and scope in the existing big brands where we are placed. And the way we have positioned, and I've been talking about the new go-to-market model in terms of how we have bifurcated what we want to focus in Metro and Tier 1 town and what and, 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 the, and, the, and, and our strategy going ahead in Tier 1 and beyond towns. So we see huge scope in our existing big brands and, and, and that is quite reflective 
has reported externally and what we have reported for quarter one that these brands are not only gaining market share but they are delivering market beating performance and mega brands are not created in a day it takes time so conceptually it 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 if 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 we are able to if we are able to generate a revenue close to 7 to 10 crores for the first year of launch for a brand conceptually we are more than happy because we have a critical mass of prescriptions which we are getting from the medical fraternity and the brand is getting good support so that is what is the intention going ahead and we have selected our spaces where we want to play coming to mna whenever conceptually uh, we get the right op, right right uh, right asset to evaluate we we will we will consider consider it will not be shying away from that but that also from a indian perspective it takes time because 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 conceptually you also have to look at from a mna perspective what you want to buy also is strategically fit fit and is a part of your plan going ahead to meet your future aspirations okay okay sir all the best thanks shine here yeah. let's take the next question thank you the next question is from the line of rahul jawani from iifl please go ahead hi sir thanks for taking my question uh, how do you see the growth for the india business panning out for the rest of this year given that the base for the acute therapies will uh, will still be favorable uh, going into the second half of this year because our lantac and metrogil prescriptions were impacted last year and with respect to driving prescriptions for metrogil and lantac in tier 2 and tier 3 markets uh, which was a stated strategy for you how are some of those initiatives progressing See Rahul, if I have to if if I have to comment on this, see, we conceptually saw more than normal growth mainly for the demand and surge that we saw in for Rentec and Metrogil in this quarter. But I think this will normalize in next three to four months. But what I spoke earlier that the entire new go-to market model that we have put in place, which is yielding good results for both our flagship segments and equally new launches. so we maintain our endeavor to grow above market and close to high to mid teens that is what i can that is what i can guide at this moment of time and i think lot of efforts have been put uh, in terms of nurturing the big brands that we have not only for rentec and metrogy but also what i spoke earlier in the in, in the previous question which is in the world of hypertension where we enjoy enjoy market share close to 50 to 60% for our philatar franchisee close to 70% for our nicardia franchisee and we see huge scope in this brand also contributing and 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 towards fueling the growth in the coming time sure sir and with respect to this strategy of driving growth for these brands in tier 2 tier 3 markets so would that growth be driven by the trade generic segment or uh, uh, you are targeting different channel for uh, driving growth in these brands in the tier 2 tier 3 markets it's a combination of both but the more inclination is to get is to get prescription driven growth in the tier 2 and beyond towns Sure, sir. And uh, sir, with respect to this Rantec price hike, which you said will start reflecting from fourth quarter onwards. Now, uh, on the basis of uh, price hike in that product, uh, are we revising our EBITDA margin guidance for next year? Because historically, we have speaking, we have spoken about uh, margin expansion of 50 to 100 basis points every year. So, with Rantec price hike benefit, would we be able to deliver better margins than what we have done historically for FY? 23 see hey, rahul we are very clear in terms of when we look at rentec price rentec price has been very has been a respect for the industry and if you look at from a product it is how it is from a accessible perspective affordability perspective we believe this comes as a breather but we are we are likely to see the benefit of rentec what kunal spoke earlier by end of q3 starting q4 and we still have good inventory in the market close to 3 to 4 months so 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 and we we had maintained this inventory because of the entire uncertain uncertain during the covid times and we continue to guide in terms of ebitda margin see ebitda margin were close to uh, 27% as as what we reported for the last financial year and in my in my previous commentary what we had what, what we had uh, given guidance that will be close to the same profile of margin for 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 the current financial year so there 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 it's a combination of headwinds and tailwinds that is how that is how the business happens so 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 
some of the some of the issues that we are facing in the international market conceptually what we face in quarter 1 it will return back rent at price in case benefit will start getting in q4 so we continue to guide in terms of maintaining the same profile of ebitda margin what we delivered in last year sure sir one last question from my end what was the pre cash flow generation during the quarter hi rahul vijay here uh, the except quantum i will not be able to quantify but the there has been a very decent amount of pre cash flow during this quarter uh, as you will see that we, we do not have any major uh, capital commitment as of now and the profitability is quite healthy so it has led to a good amount of a pre cash flow generation in this quarter sure sir thank you thanks a lot thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kunal randeria from edelweiss please go ahead good afternoon and thanks for giving me the opportunity so just one question around your Sorry, new division uh, kunal we are not able to hear you clearly can you use the handset mode while speaking so i am on the handset mode uh, i hope i'm audible now better yeah Yeah. So, just one question around the two new divisions, Renova and Nova. So, if you can just walk us through the kind of investment that you have made, I, I understand that you made some comment in the opening statement. Uh, but how all the investments been made? Or are you looking to still add more sales force? Uh, some more details around that would be great. So, so I think what 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 I what. if you if you recall the comment that we gave last time and what i what i spoke earlier we have not added a single person on the field we have reconfigured our go to market strategy and we have reallocated our manpower and we have got a team of around 40 people in renova which are going to nephrologist there are around close to 2000 nephrologists practicing in the country and we have a good relationship with nephrologists as they are a good prescriber of our anti hypertensive range so we have launched in renova half a dozen products which are more into kidney supportive therapy that is that is renal supportive therapy that is that is what we have done and quarter one quarter one was the first quarter for our renova division equally for our nova division where we have got 350 people they also have been resource allocated from our existing team in the entire new go to market model and this business had a good starting point because we also shifted some of our products from the existing business in the world of pediatrics and there are half a dozen new launches which we have done in the field of respiratory so all this conceptually from a manning perspective there is no cost which has been added what we are trying to leverage our existing opportunity for nephrology pediatrics and respiratory segment and we are also we are also happy to share that what 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 early success that we have got in terms of prescription traction gives us confidence that this both the initiatives that we have put in place should help us to deliver market beating performance across the company in india geography perfect sir so at this stage you are confident you don't need any more investments here Right? No, so it's a, it, it, these are normal investment in terms of the entire medical marketing initiatives, which conceptually helps us in terms of disseminating the knowledge in the field of medical fertility. Otherwise, you are you are you are the, the combination of products are in house and P2P and NL, which are helping us uh, in terms of our field force venturing into newer categories of business and some more and more number of patients in the field of pediatrics, respiratory, and kidney disease. Okay, sir. So, and this last new product will be launching in the next two weeks. Sorry, Kuna, your voice. How many new products would you be launching in the next two to three years? Not two to three years, but already. If, uh, if I have to talk about that, we have already have launched close to twelve to fifteen products in last six months in 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 both this uh, both these new initiatives and couple of products in the world of metabolics. i think we are rightly poised that how do we get now the maximum from what we have launched so we are not in a hurry to launch number of products we conceptually what we believe in in terms of how we can make a difference to the life of the patient by getting something which is niche innovative and also partner with the healthcare professionals in 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 driving better quality of life of the patients 
got it sir thank you and all the best thank you thank you kunal thank you the next question is from the line of abdul qadar puranwala from anand rati please go ahead hi uh, thank you for the opportunity so my first question is with regards to the new launches what we have done so going ahead what is the kind of growth we see because what we are guiding is for somewhere uh, somewhere slightly higher uh, than the market growth but because of this two new division shouldn't we grow faster than what we are guiding as of now so already if you look at the growth what we demonstrated in quarter 1 was close to 39% and this was basically we saw good uptake in the field of rentech and metrogen but that growth is going to normalize but uh, what i gave in my earlier commentary that we will continue to deliver a market beating performance and uh, 4 to 5% element of growth should come from the new initiatives that we have taken in place and and rest of the growth we look at from a volume perspective of our existing brands and whenever possible we will be able to take the price increase that is sure, that sir. is how that is that is how we are seeing the business going ahead understood and my second question is on uh, the rent tax price increase so do the do uh, do would be allowed to take a 50% price increase but given in q3 or in q4 uh, would we be taking the entire price hike or this was again largely depend on how the market dynamic pans out within the molecule which would compete with the uh, ranitidine see we will uh, at this stage we will try to maximize the price situation the timing of this has already been communicated and that's how we are thinking about it Sure. What would be your comment? Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Emma. It's from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for taking our question. A uh, couple of questions. One, uh, in contrast media. Can you uh, help us through the numbers? What's the uh, uh, domestic uh, sales of contrast media? Also, want to understand uh, um, uh, the. IQ IQBI uh, data shows 22% growth for Q1 whereas we are showing 39% growth in domestic formulations so besides contrast media is there any other thing uh, that would cause uh, such a huge uh, variance between the both the numbers see uh, our contrast media business uh, has kind of revived because it was a very very low base uh, uh, last year and uh, we are kind of uh, having a very good uh, momentum uh, in this quarter we would not want to specifically discuss the segment of product wise details but uh, it shows a very very healthy uh, momentum uh, as we uh, look at q1 of this financial year with respect to overall variation and difference between iqbia and you know what we have internally reported see these things kind of vary right what we saw was our internal demand really pick up because of huge uh, surge and offtake during second wave of covid for our products like rantac and metrogen now it becomes very difficult for the external uh, agencies to kind of have an exact tap on you know what that surge is and you will always see those uh, bit of variations overall as we think about our business our primary and secondary trends are absolutely matching we have our inventory levels uh, absolutely under control and uh, you know therefore quite confident of you know uh, uh, looking ahead as well okay and uh, what's been the mr productivity in q1 so what see last time also what we have spoken our productivity uh is now almost at par or more with the industry trend at the, the industry trend is around 4 or close to around 4 4.2 lakh we are trending close to around 5 lakh rupees per person productivity uh which will which conceptually will uh, continue to grow at a healthy growth of around 12 to 14% yeah that's good to know and one uh, one uh, finance related question to mr vijay uh, uh, now that uh, the esop uh, uh, policy and and the uh, uh, scheme is out so when can we uh, expect esop related costs to hit the pnl i think this esop related costs will start uh, coming in from q2 onwards uh, 
as of now it is just a formulation of the, of the approval of the scheme which has happened. So you will see it from the coming quarters. Okay, and uh, so the EBITDA guidance uh, uh, is uh, taking into account uh, such costs or uh, you are considering this as a one-off thing? So this is uh, one of kind of uh, transactions, I mean costs, so EBITDA guidance is something independent of this. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Charulata Gedani from Dalal and Brocha. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. My my question pertains to in the Indian market, even Nicardia has seen a growth from for uh, after, after quite some time. So uh, if you could throw some light on what led to the growth and also uh, what would be the COVID-related uh, revenue from domestic market? Uh, because uh, in the sense, uh, do you expect some tapering of going forward? So Nicardia, uh, what, I, what, what I spoke earlier, see Nicardia is our flagship brand. And we have a combination of traditional Nicardia 30 and 60 milligram, and we also have got Excel, which is an incremental innovation. And this brand conceptually is rightly positioned, and it gets the entire prescription traction from nephrologists in the world of uncontrolled hypertension. So as a strategy, we have, what we have taken in terms of how do maximum number of patients get benefit with the incremental innovative product that we have put in the market in the form of Nicardia Excel. So that is the strategy that we are following, and this only this, this brand. Uh, enjoys 80 to 90 percent market share and we only are trying to influ influence the ecosystem with this entire strategy that we are following for Nicardia. From a COVID perspective, Kunal, why don't you come? So from a COVID perspective, see, we have very uh, limited products, just one or two. The contribution of these has been uh, very insignificant to our overall growth. Uh, yes, but what we saw was that uh, during the second wave, some of our flagship brands uh, did play an important role as co-prescription during uh, care, but uh, no specific uh, significant contribution from main COVID therapy. Okay, like uh, did you did you see any peculiar demand coming from the hospitals which were treating COVID patients? for Metrogel or Rantac? That's what, Rantac and Metrogel did well. So their pickup was, uh, was quite significant and we did see a surge in demand for Rantac and Metrogel uh, during the second uh, wave of COVID. And as was mentioned earlier also, as we move ahead, the demand trend will certainly stabilize. But uh, outside this, you know, with respect to main core COVID therapy, you know, we just had one or two products and there was very limited uh, contribution to the overall growth profile, which you see. Okay. Okay. And my second question pertains to the challenges and shipments that you, that you saw in Q1. Uh, by when do you see uh, it coming back uh, to normalcy? And uh, like, will uh, by when will it reflect in the export numbers? See, unfortunately, very difficult to predict. Uh, you know, uh, by when and how the logistics situation will uh, normalize. Uh, you know, some of the factors uh, regarding congestion at various uh, transshipment terminals uh, in China and all continue to worsen. We hope that the situation should normalize over the next uh, two to three months, and that should certainly help our uh, international business going forward. Uh, also, we would not really want to completely attribute the challenges only related to logistics, uh, as we maintain that you know some of the demand trends should also likely uh, uh, improve going forward, spe specifically in pockets like uh, APAC and Central America, and that again should have a positive impact on our business going forward. Uh, and you expect that by when? We are hopeful that as we look at uh, you know the next two three months, the demand revival along with logistics uh, situation should ease out. Okay, right. And what would be the lozenges utilization currently? Uh, we are operating at close to 65% utilization for our lozenges. Thanks, thanks, Charulata. We'll, uh, we'll just take the next question in queue. 
Yeah, same. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neelam Punjabi from Puppet Chitti Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, first of all, congratulations on some good numbers. Uh, firstly, I wanted to know, uh, given we had a higher contribution from domestic business, uh, however, in this quarter, uh, but that did not translate into gross margins. Is it because of higher uh, contributions from Rantas and Metrogen? Neelam, I think uh, uh, I would like to just answer this. Uh, the gross margin is a combination of several uh, factors. The most important is the, the product mix. Uh, Rantac Metrogil did play its own uh, role in this. This is not the only reason, but there are some uh, cost factors are also uh, impacting the overall margin. Uh, certain API costs are uh, showing some indication of increase. And that's where uh, the margin profile is, though very strong, but has slightly remained at the same level of last year. Got it. And uh, my second question is uh, on the ESOP cost. So um, according to our calculations, uh, given the uh, grant date and the exercise price, uh, the non-cash component uh, uh, we calculated to be around 60 crores in FY22 and uh, around 75 crores in FY23. Is that the right number? Of course, the fair value would be dependent on black shows, but uh, ballpark is it the Am I in the right direction? I think this number, uh, we are also just going to get calculated based on this black hole. But uh, more or less, I think it should be in this range. I mean, exact number we haven't also calculated. Got it. And uh, lastly, so, uh, you know, brands are uh, quite hard to find and expensive to acquire in India. So what's the ROC profile that you're looking at when you are looking at your inorganic uh, strategy going forward? Is this going to be uh, ROC di diluted? See, from an inorganic uh, strategy uh, you know, perspective, uh, things are very opportunistic. Uh, you know, at this stage, difficult for us to comment on you know, how that uh, essentially uh, impacts our ROC profile. One thing which we can assure you is that when we look at these uh, accusative options, uh, we are really end of the day looking at value creation and synergies which can come from uh, revenue side or operating synergies. Got it, but can you just share any threshold limit for this? Uh, not at this stage. Got it. And just one last question. Uh, what's the net cash as on June? I think uh, I'd already mentioned in my earlier uh, reply to the Rahul that the uh, exact number is not uh, available with me, but I think it is very close to about uh, uh, 180 to 100 crores uh, because there are no major cash uh, capex during this quarter. Got it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Elroy Lobo from Kotak Investment Advisors Limited. Please go ahead. Elroy, yeah, please go ahead. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to check, you know, KKR normally gets very involved with providing strategic inputs to some of their group entities in all companies they invest in. Uh, is it the same with uh, JB Chemicals? And if so, is there any kind of expense that is being paid to any KKR-related entity for providing such strategic inputs? And if so, what is the quantum? We will not, we would not like to get into details in terms of expense, but KKR has a, has, has a role in terms of they conceptually have, conceptually have invested in this business. They have got 54% stake and they have got the right management in place. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, it's a combination of combination of collaboration which works. And we have got three 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 people from uh, KKR, four four guys from KKR on the board. And and it's a combination of KKR and the independent board members from where we get the guidance for the right purpose. Otherwise, the management team is fully responsible for running the business. 
and equally from an opportunity perspective as KKR as a rich global network, we look forward for help in terms of how we can enhance our entire work in the world of contract manufacturing. We also look at from a perspective of how we can fasten the opportunity which is available in the form of MA. And and that is where we stand from from a perspective of how KKR comes in. And just to add uh, specifically, there is no real uh, cash paid to KKR, you know, uh, nothing like that. Okay. So all these inputs are basically part of their, you know, equity stake that they have in the company. Uh, they bring this expertise to the table with no cash outgo to any other KKR related entity. See, very clearly, as Nikhil stated, their strategic guidance will always be there. Uh, they being the uh, you know the largest investor, and uh, again clarifying no fees in any form. Okay, thank you. And could you just you know comment on Metrogel in terms of price trends? How are you seeing you know that product really you know shape up and going forward? Could you repeat? Sorry, Metrogel. on Metrogel, could you just you know comment on how pricing has you know worked for that particular product, and what do you see that going forward? So, you know, the Metrogel, uh, what we saw was good uh, kind of uh, uh, demand uh, picking up uh, in, in Q1. As far as the pricing is uh, concerned, uh, the uh, re-reviewed price was already factored in the base uh, from last financial year. You know, for us, it's a very, very important product. Uh, we are looking at life cycle management of Metrogel across various SKUs. And we will continue to build on this uh, flagship uh, uh, brand. Okay, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, please press star in one. Next question is from the line of Naresh Vaswani from Samisha Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, so how much of our total manufacturing is currently outsourced and uh, what was our overall capacity utilization in uh, Q1? So our, capit our, our capacity utilization remains close to 65 to 70% and, and the outsource, which is majorly for India market, uh, remains close to 25 to 30%. That is where we stand. Okay, and on the international uh, business, I was just, I mean, I, you mentioned uh, you gave the community, but uh, why some markets have been impacted due to COVID and not uh, South Africa and US? You can help me with some uh, uh, color on that. So in, in, in some of the Southeast Asian markets and uh, African markets, the, the timing of the COVID wave was 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 constantly starting quarter one starting quarter one and close and, and and i think in the month of close to month of june and if you look at south africa and us they already are in the regular flow and 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 and, and the business was less disrupted uh, that is how we see quarter one going and 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 this constantly happens when you operate in uh, different geographies across the globe so you will have a combination of headwind and tailwind and that is how the business performs. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Julie Mehta, Mount Infra Finance. Please go ahead. Yes. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask, what is the contribution from the top five brands? Uh, if you'll be able to help me with that. Uh, it's close to 75%. And when you talk of five top five brands, these are not top five, top five brands. These are constantly 30 different SKUs. And these top five brands, which comprises of 30 different SKUs, go to different variety of specialties in different geographies of the country. So that is what, 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 what I admire about the company, that, that we have done the right life cycle management of these grants at the right time, which is fetching us uh, good results and we are able to deliver market bidding performance. 70% of domestic. Okay. Yeah, 70% of domestic. Okay, sir. And so I just wanted to know, uh, like, how was the growth like from those brands? Uh, like so those all those all brands were, the grew, grew at a healthy pace of around 20%, 20-25% plus, and they all quarter to quarter, if you look at IMS, are only gaining market share and delivering market bidding performance 
and gaining market share where conceptually they are leader from from a market share of 40% to 70%. Okay, sir. I just wanted to ask, uh, like going forward, what is the uh, vision for the domestic uh, market? Like, so I, I I shared that in my in, in my commentary, the domestic market will will help us in 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 driving market beating performance, which is a combination of big brands that we have, and this this market beating performance will also be uh, supported by some of the newer initiatives that we have taken. By launching a couple of new divisions and around eight to ten new brands. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much. Julia. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gagan Tareja from Kodak, and that will be the last question for the day. Thank yeah, you. Uh, yeah, good evening. Am I audible? Yes, yes, Gagan. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so my first question is around rent uh, price increases. I think three SKUs have been uh, uh, qualified under under the policy for, for a price increase. Those three SKUs would constitute how much of, of your rent franchise in India? Close to 70 to 80, 70 to 80 percent. Okay. And uh, would it be reasonable to assume that going ahead, uh, you know, those three uh, SQs would, would, you know, become more or less uh, the entire coverage of, of Frantac uh, franchise for you, uh, let's say, in, in, in the year going ahead by FY23 or so? So we have around seven to eight SQs in Frantac, and there are different products positioned position at different specialty. We have got a we have got a Rentec OD brand, which is conceptually an incremental innovative product, which we which we continue to focus in the clinic of gastroenterologists, cardiologists, orthopedics, and also beside this uh, traditional brands of Rentec, we have got Rentec NPS syrup, which is for pediatrician as a specialty. So the the composition will continue to remain the same because these are these two brands are much more progressive and much more prescription oriented. And, and have you seen, uh, you know, new entrants in ranitidine or, or you know, maybe maybe a more increased sort of focus of presence from existing, uh, uh, you know, uh, peer suppliers in, in the ranitidine portfolio? Uh, post, uh, uh, so there are so there are there are a couple of brands which are in the market in the field of ranitidine and they have their own strategy to focus. And there are some, there are, there are, there will be two to two to three brands in the world of generic, generic also. But every company has their own strategy in terms of how they would like to play, play the entire uh, opportunity in the field whenever they get the, they, they get some of prescription, whether it is a prescription product, whether it is a, it, whether it is a generic, generic play. Okay. Final question from my side: uh, Silacar and Nicardia are, are you know, uh, your pivotal brands and. Uh, and, and you 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 demonstrated very very healthy volume growth in these brands, and you also indicate that the runway is still long here. If you could give us some idea of you know the market size, and and you know the evolution of how how uh, uh, amlodipine versus clonidipine uh, you know fare uh, from a therapeutic standpoint, are you seeing continuous shift from amlodipine to clonidipine? If you could give us some, you know, some sense of uh, of how this market is evolving, it would it would be very helpful. See, first of all, just to uh, give an indication of the size of the opportunity, uh, you know, just uh, in terms of uh, incidence and the patient pool which is on therapy, we are talking about almost uh, 350 million uh, hypertensive, uh, uh, you know, potential patient pool. And uh, only 140 to 150 million being a, on some form of therapy. So there is a big, big opportunity still to uh, shape uh, therapy and uh, expand the the patient flow. Uh, with respect to uh, you know its comparison with the other competitor, Amlodipin, uh, we believe that both have their uh, own uh, strengths uh, and both have their own uh, place uh, in the. Uh, in the treatment protocols, silnidipine has its own strengths. Uh, where silnidipine really scores is that it has uh, a very limited uh, uh, side effect profile with respect to uh, you know renal complications, and that's where it's a preferred choice. Uh, 
you know, as we look at, uh, you know, how do we really need to expand on our antihypertensive basket, uh, we are very clear of uh, the silnidipine advantages and where it uh, uh, where it needs to play, irrespective of the of the other molecules. Yeah. Thanks a lot. That's all from my side. Thank you, Liz. Uh, do you want to kind of continue, ladies and gentlemen? That is the last question. I now have the conference over to the management for your closing comments. So uh, I would like to thank all the participant, participants for patient hearing and and in whatever capacity we were able to ha answer all the questions from the audience. Just would like to conclude that, that, the, that the outlook for the business for the rest of the rest of the year remains positive and we see continuing growth momentum along while continuing our cost efficiency initiatives. Also, the fundamentals remains in place where we are well positioned to drive long-term value growth for all our stakeholders based on sustainable gains from, gains from our key strategic initiatives. Also, I would like to wish all the participa participants uh, be safe, be healthy, and, and, and all, of, all of you, if you have got uh, one dose of vaccination, Conceptually, the second dose of vaccination should be taken at the right time because that is how we will be able to get out of this entire pandemic of, of COVID which the entire world has been suffering. Thank you all. Thank you all for patience here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now, with this, we'll end the JB Pharmaceutical Service call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of JD Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.